Back to Canberra now. Joining us is the National Senator, Matt Canavan. Matt, good to see you. Thanks for your time. One of the nation's oldest power stations, folks, Liddell. It will close tomorrow. It'll be the beginning of a 10-day closure period. Can the grid hold it together, Matt? Well, I don't think we're ready, uh, Peter. Uh, we've got some, some experts out there saying there's enough power, but we heard all these things before the Hazelwood power station was shut in Victoria a few years ago. And after that was shut, we had an absolute energy crisis. Power prices surged, uh, factories shut. And let's hope we're not seeing history repeat here because we really haven't replaced uh, things like Hazelwood and Liddell uh, with reliable power sources. Uh, we have invested record amounts in solar and winds, but that's not available all the time. And we're now seeing predictions that we could be short of up to somewhere like eight uh, uh, coal-fired power stations in the next 10 years, uh, 8,000 megawatts uh, are short of power. Uh, that's a lot of power and losing 1,200 megawatts here now, this, over the next 10 days is very concerning. Well, AEMO, though, you, you, is, is one of the authorities and it says things should be OK until at least 2025, which brings a raring into the picture. So is that enough to assuage concerns for people? Well... Well, I go back to that Hayeswood situation. I, I was the resources minister then, and I remember we hauled Hayes, uh, sorry, we hauled Emo in uh, to justify their claim that the Hazelwood power station would not increase power prices or cause any issues. Uh, and they put out, you can go back and have a look. They put out a media statement in uh, in March 2017, saying that yeah, everything will be fine, just like they're saying now. And they were completely wrong. Within six months, they had to buy diesel right. generators to keep the lights on in Victoria. So, so I, I, yeah, excuse me if I don't always believe these experts who have been wrong time and time again. Uh, it's clear, though, that we do not have enough reliable power. We're effectively running our power system on a hope and a prayer. And I don't think that's any way to treat uh, the, particularly the manufacturing right. workers of this country. They deserve to have a proper investment in reliable power that can guarantee their jobs. So Liddell, it supplies about 10% of... Uh... Uh, the electricity to the grid in, in New South Wales and there is an expectation that there will be more anticipated renewables coming online. Will that be enough at least to make up that 10% shortfall in your view? Well, the problem with comparing coal-fired power and renewable energy is uh, it's, not, uh, it's not oranges for oranges. It's not a like-for-like -like comparison uh, coal-fired power can remain on almost all of the time. It's uh, what is the jargon called dispatchable capacity. Uh, the solar and wind uh, investments we're seeing cannot do that. And in every country in the world where this has been tried, where they've tried to rely on exclusively solar and wind investments, you've seen higher power prices and lower re reliability of the power system. And so I don't know what we, why we think we should try the same failed approaches uh, that have occurred overseas. It is clear uh, that what we need right now to get power prices down, to bring some cost of rel living relief to the Australian people, is to invest in reliable power. Uh, that it must mean coal or gas or or hydro or or nuclear. Let's let's uh, let's let's yeah. put nuclear on the table in the next couple of weeks. I'll have some Senate hearings on removing our nuclear ban. Let's do that. Okay, uh, still energy related here, but uh, it relates to the economy, Matt. Uh, Jim Chalmers has got to find some money. So there is a, a balloon that's been floated at the moment regarding the petroleum resource rent tax, uh, a suggestion that that needs to be increased from its current levels. Would you support that at all? Well, I don't think Jim knows whether he's coming or going at the moment. A few months ago, he was saying that uh, he's going to rein spending in. He's going to be a... Uh, uh, a vigilant uh, 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 member of the Razor gang uh, to control inflation. He was saying inflation's our biggest issue and we need to rein spending in this budget. Today he's saying he wants to spend money and, as you say, potentially raise money because of a slowing economy. And if the economy is slowing, why would he be considering raising taxes on such an important well, it's industry? To cut, like it's to cut sector. the profits, right? Uh, I just don't know what the economic strategy here is from this government. Yeah, but what's the strategy? Is the problem inflation? Is the problem lower economic growth? They seem to change... The government is, so, is changing every day of the week on this. I still think the biggest economic issue we face is inflation. It is not under control. It's come down a little bit from its peaks. But if you look at the 1970s and the last experience of inflation, there were lots of false troughs uh, through that period. So it is way too early uh, to be putting up the mission accomplished sign on inflation. Uh, I hope this government does find some guts uh, and rein in government spending because if they don't, that will only keep, keep fueling inflation, which is the biggest issue facing Australian families. All right, Matt Canavan, we'll leave it there. Talk to you soon.